Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and I'm here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, everyone. Hello, Pete Hello, Wright. Hello, Nikki Kinzer. Ooh, mm. I had a, had a little bit of an accent. That was a real, what's it? <laughs> uh, what's it, Bridgerton? That was a real Bridgerton moment right there. Oh, yeah. I have no idea where Are that came from. Are you watching that show? No. Apparently, it's very sexy. Really? That's what I've heard. It was just an excuse <laughs> what for... Is, what show is it? It's like Bridger, Bridgerton? Brid, it's the, it's Bridgerton? the new Shonda Rhimes. Heard of it. it's, it's from Shondaland. You're a Shonda Ooh. fan, right? Oh, come on, Nikki. <laughs> Nikki. <laughs> I don't know, am Shonda I? <laughs> Rhimes is in your strike zone. Are you kidding? Oh, I love Grey's Anatomy. Um... No, I never was a fan of Grey's Anatomy. I never watched it. Okay, well, you've got some so catch up because it's been on for like twenty seven years. So, I, well, I think like twenty seven <laughs> plus ten. It's been. It has to be like the longest it is running, a very long running TV, TV show, show ever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyway, this is the new. She's got this new Netflix series, and it's like a a period piece. So everybody's in period mm. costumes and dresses and things and then uh, i have not watched a single episode but what those of my circle have said is it's normal episode normal episode normal they swear and stuff it's netflix they can do whatever they want and then suddenly there's right. just nudity and sex and all this stuff going on so i <laughs> so again right wow. in the strike zone i'm just saying <laughs> Like an episode of Shameless, That's right, right. But back but in the Sean, time, back in the yeah, day, different time back in the day. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we are here to uh, present this fine ADHD podcast to you today, and uh, we're going to talk about our old friend anxiety. It's kind of it's kind of a follow up to last week. Is that was that the intention? Well, right. Yes, because last week we were we were talking about moving on, you know, and and uh, it's it's hard to move on when you have. Uh, anxiety and and anxiety makes it hard to move on. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> that's kind of where I I thought the two connect. Well, I'm I'm interested in in first of all doing a bit of a review over um, kind of you know what do we know about anxiety and ADHD and where are those connections because they're always surprising. They're always surprising, especially if you're mm-hmm. living with one or both. And uh, then we can talk a little bit about where we find our peace. Uh, what because we both live with anxiety too, and so uh, that'll yeah. be something to talk about. It'll be a real humdinger. Mm. That's right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Before we do that, head over to TakeControlADHD.com. You can get to know us a little bit better. You can listen to the show right there on the website or subscribe to the mailing list, and we'll send you an email each time a new episode is released. Connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD. And if this show has ever touched you or helped you make a change in your life for the better, if you've ever found that you understand your relationship with ADHD in a new way, we invite you to consider supporting the show directly through Patreon at patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast. Patreon is listener-supported podcasting. For a few dollars a month, you can help guarantee that we continue to grow the show, add new features, and invest more heavily in our wonderful community. And you can also join us for our live streams when we record this show every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific, United States Pacific. And uh, we would love to have you join us, jump in the chat room, and uh, pod along with us. Visit patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast to learn more. You have news. You have some sort of news that you have not told me about. Right. Well, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, The first announcement is kind of exciting. Uh, I got quoted in the Wall Street Journal. What's that now? Quoted? <clears throat> yes. Yes. Have you seen My it? I didn't, in... I didn't even yes. know to look for it yet. <laughs> well, it just came out. It just, it just, uh, it came out. So we'll put a link in the show notes and I'm going to, of course, share it. What? Uh, on social media and everything. But yeah, it's pretty cool. I got interviewed by um, uh, Rachel uh from the wall street journal and so it's a it's a uh article about procrastination i'm looking at it and, right now oh i know it's very uh, exciting <sighs> but one of the reasons that i want to bring this up is not just because it's exciting to be in the wall street journal who doesn't like that it's fun uh but there's a specific reason that she reached out to me and that was because of the Thursday study halls uh. that I conduct. <laughs> so this is how small the world is. 
I uh, received a uh, email from, and I can't remember her last name right now, so forgive me, but uh, Rachel from the Wall Street Journal. And at first I thought it was a joke. I thought, oh, this is Pete. You joking. thought it was me? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. No, I thought. I'm like, is this real? Like, who who is this person? And then I looked her up and I'm like, oh, wow, she actually is a real person. And she was doing an article on, on procrastination. And uh, we spoke and she said that the reason that she had heard about me was because of the study halls, that there was a coworker or somebody she knew who had attended one of my study halls. And so she wanted to get more information about it and how it helped with procrastination. And so that's how it all started. So it's very exciting. And uh, which leads me to tell people about these study halls because they can help with procrastination uh, and getting started on things. So we we do it Thursday afternoons um, from one to five. And that's specific. So it'd be four to eight uh, Eastern time. And I lead the group through a pom- Pomodoro. So every 25 minutes we work and then I get on the microphone and say five minutes, we're taking a break and you can come and go uh, within that four hours and you can tell us what you're working on. And it's just the whole body doubling and accountability aspect that really works for people. So it was exciting to talk about that in, you know, a big, newspaper. Uh, But I also want to remind our people that it is available. Um, And what's cool is that if you are a Supreme Patreon member, you get these study halls for free. So you are, you will get an email every uh, Thursday morning that you are invited to go to the study hall. Um, for the public, it's a ten dollar pay as you go, uh, which will probably be honestly probably the best ten dollars you spend all week <laughs> if you get some stuff done. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah. So that's exciting news. And then I have another announcement too. But uh, say anything you want to say I about the say Wall Street Journal. It, now, if you join the study <laughs> hall because of Nikki, it's just like you've been quoted in the Wall Street Journal. It's by the transitive that's property. Right. Science and mathematics <laughs> say you could be quoted in the Wall Street Journal because Nikki was just qu- It's a long quoting science thing. Don't worry it about is. it. It's just, but it's amazing. It's fantastic. I'm a little yeah. bit bummed that the um, I can't see it because I'm not behind the paywall. So I only get the first like three or four paragraphs. I've got to find a way around that. Oh, sometimes you can Oh, if Google you have it. Apple News. Oh, it's in Apple News. If you have Apple I, News. I happen to yes. have Apple News. Oh, that's yes. great news. You get the full yep. article in yep, Apple yep, yep. News. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, yeah. congratulations. That's All great. right. What is your what Thank is your you. other news? So the second thing that I want to bring up that I haven't talked a lot about on the podcast and uh but I've been doing is I have this new program called GPS. It's guided planning sessions. And we just started last week. We're going on to our second week right now. And uh, it's been fabulous so far. And I'm really excited about this um, program. I'm offering it periodically. So it's it's in six week sessions. And then I'm going to take a week off and then do another six weeks. So if this is something, if you are looking for some help on planning your week, getting into the habit of planning your week, having some guidance on uh, how to do that. Uh, basically, what I do is on Mondays and, and Thursdays, I go through this uh, step-by-step process and it gives you time and space to do that planning and ask me questions along the way. Uh, it has been really fun and I can't wait to hear uh, how this first group, I'm already getting such positive uh Uh, feedback that it'll be great to see what happens at the end of the six weeks. But I want our listeners to know that it's, it's here. I'm, I have this service. Uh, if you are interested, go to my website, check out the page. Uh, and if you have questions, make sure you let me know because, uh, this is pretty cool. This is something I've never done before. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's more of like a workshop. It's not a, a, not necessarily a coaching session. Um, but you get to ask me lots of questions and, and it's fun. It's really great. So I I just wanted to throw out that, you know, GPS, look for GPS at Take Control AD. That's right. That's right. It's right under the coaching section and you can have GPS fun too. It's really great. Okay, Nikki, here we go. Our old friend anxiety. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, no, God, is that so too sad. much? Too sad. I shouldn't go <laughs> there. I should really not go there. That's really too much. No, that's too much. <laughs> um, well, so we've been talking about anxiety and and the experience of anxiety, and and so I thought we might 
kick off our conversation by talking a little bit about the presence of anxiety in our lives. What is it? What does it look like for you? Anxiety. Mm. I feel it in my stomach, uh, and my mind gets really blurry um, mm-hmm. <laughs> and foggy, and it's hard to think straight. Um, that's how I. Ha- that's how I know I have it. Uh, I'm feeling it right now, actually, yeah. as we speak. Um, so yeah, it's present. It's not always as bad as you know it is right now. And the only reason why I say it's bad right now is I've already shared it with Discord that my father is sick and is in the hospital. So there's some anxiety certainly, around that. Certainly. Um, but uh, yeah, so, but it, but it comes and goes. It certainly is something that can be triggered and sometimes it's not triggered. And I have no idea why I have that anxious feeling, but it's yeah, there. Yeah. I, uh, but me too, for me, it manifests in terms of uh, repetitive cycles and spirals. And so mm-hmm. particularly repetitive thought spirals and I can't, uh, can't shake them. Yes. And um, me too. yeah, I mean, it's just, it can be dizzying and um, panic attacks, not so regularly anymore now that I've figured them out. And, um, uh, so I can, I can kind of get through them, but, um, it's, uh, but, but it is, pervasive and it's all the time every day and it's exacerbated by certain other conditions and one of those is ADHD and so I I start looking up you know let's just let's just check the research let's see what professionals are thinking about right now and uh, about the the uh, sort of the the pairing the sweet sweet pairing of anxiety and ADHD am I making this up in my head or or is one really making the other uh, worse and so I start searching, and I've seen numbers reporting as high or as low as twenty five percent people living with ADHD also live with some form of anxiety, to as high as over fifty percent of people living with ADHD. I think about that: over half of the people living with ADHD also living with anxiety disorder, and even higher than that. If you happen to be a woman person, you ha- have a mm-hmm. higher order of magnitude relationship with ADHD and anxiety. And I think that is kind of stunning, um, that relationship. And and so it's it's really important to kind of address and understand, I would submit, what is your ADHD and what is your anxiety and where do the two meet? Uh, so because... Mm, gosh, that's... Art. Right? I, like, I, I, but I think figuring that out allows you to take steps toward mediating r- r- that relationship with yes. yourself. Right? right, right, for sure. Ned mm-hmm. uh, Hallowell, our, our dear friend of the show, Ned Hallowell, have we mentioned? Uh, <laughs> Ned Hallowell is a dear friend of the show. Uh, he, he actually separates... <laughs> we pretend like he is, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me rephrase that. Ned Hallowell, who knows that we have a show. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> who's been yeah, on it? Yeah, he's been on it once. once. <laughs> um, he, he actually uh, separates worry from anxiety. He says that worry has a target. One worries about something. Anxiety is this this free-floating, no clear source of direction. Uh, both yeah. of these things are unpleasant, but anxiety may be more so, he says, because the sufferer cannot identify a cause, right? And that's, that's an important piece because um, anxiety can be rudderless. It can just be, I am anxious about everything. I am sitting here stewing in my own bile because I don't know what's going on in the world and I'm terrified of it. But I would also add that anxiety can also be highly specifically focused, as in specific phobias, right? I mean, you don't just have needle phobia for nothing, right? That That's a highly specific, right. and I'm, I'm not worried about my needle phobia. I'm worried that I'm going to pass out and hit my head and bleed out on the floor, and also there will be a needle in my arm as a result of my response to needles. So... Oh dear. I, yeah, did I just go again? I went into a train. Well, you just, yeah, that just gave me anxiety yeah. thinking about it because I actually <laughs> visually, yeah. I visualized the whole thing happening as you were yeah. talking. And now I have this vision of Pete yep. with a me needle too. in his arm. Yeah, no, it's terrible. With his head cracked open mm-hmm. on a really sterile, like, hospital. Floor. Yeah. Yeah, that's me too. That's me great. too. Okay. Thanks. So, Thanks for uh, that. <laughs> I I just think it's important to recognize that the anxiety cannot yeah. doesn't have to be totally rudderless and that's why it's sort of the 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 overarching condition. Um and and maybe we should do a quick review of uh the the sort of 
physical experience of ADHD versus anxiety. And and I say this because of the number of times that I've discovered people who say that somebody with repetitive movement trigger, right, who can't stop shaking their leg or tapping a pen or something like that as a result of their ADHD experience and the, and the hyperactivity, uh, must be anxious. They must have anxiety because they can't stop moving. And that's not necessarily accurate. No, in fact, I wouldn't have connected the two, actually. Myself. Yeah, I, 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 well, I that's what I mean. It's like a street thing. It's like that's a the yeah. You know, it's like a street thing. Listen to me. You know what they I said write, on the block. You know, little Petey on the block. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you lived out on the street, yeah, when I was on the street, um, and yeah. so uh, I think it's important. So I I've, I heard this uh, characterization that it's lungs, not limbs. Right when you have anxiety, um, you get shortness of breath, and shortness of breath causes all kinds of other things to go on in your body. And when you have ADHD, you have uh, you might have hyperactivity, um, you might have movement, you might have all kinds of other things with um, with your body that is not characterized by anxiety. And those two things are separate. No, because you may not even notice. That you you're may doing not even it. notice. In fact, you're, you're probably doing. not. Right. And you and yeah. likely don't care. And your stress response is going to be related not to you just existing in this world doing your thing, but it's going to be a stress re- response directly related to the world responding to you doing your thing. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know, we talked about the the uh, autism experience last week. Right. Do you remember that? Did I talk about that? I don't remember. It was about the um, the experience of of living with autism, and this woman said, "You know, you, you have to understand that I am not. I, I get great joy in my repetitive." Uh, engagement. Like if I'm sitting in the back seat of a car and somebody makes a turn that I don't agree with and I say, you went the wrong way, you went the wrong way. I, it, it's, I'm not stopping. I can't stop myself saying, I, you went the wrong way, you went the wrong way. And if I was never challenged on that, I would get great joy out of it because I'm engaging so I deeply see. in the experience of the moment that I can't right. let it go. I can't get rid of it, right? I can't get it mm-hmm. out of my head. Mm-hmm. But that becomes a stress anxiety, a stress response, because people get so mad about it, right? They get so right. mad watching me and experiencing me doing that, and that becomes the stress cycle. And uh, mm-hmm. I found that really sort of laudatory, to, and, and I really found it so clear, this understanding of what that experience was, that I thought it was, it, it was important to kind of integrate that, um, you know, the degree to which you are... Uh, you are frustrated with your ADHD repetitive movement issues or ADHD hyperfocus issues can be largely influenced, not exclusively, but largely influenced by the world's response to you doing it, right? The things you forgot yeah. to do, the people you let down in the, along the way. If those people did not exist, you'd be fine. Right. I know I'm fine. If I if I'm not letting I people down, wonder, I'm okay. Though, right, right. But I also wonder if sometimes you're not really letting people down, but because you think you are, then it causes. Yeah, that's it causes what well, you're talking about. Well, and that's about anxiety, because, right? Right. Yeah. Because you are creating a repetitive sense, a repetitive thought spiral about the world that you're letting down outside. Uh, of yourself. Mm-hmm. And it mm-hmm. it's also, um, and, and that's why there are some people who live with ADHD who don't have that experience either, right? Like, there right. are people with ADHD who don't have anxiety, and they can just go right into hyper-focus mode and not be triggered by the external stresses that it may cause. Right. I, I am one of yeah. those people who is highly uh, triggered by those external stresses and the stories that I make up about what those people must be doing. They, like, you know, taking my pictures out of photo albums and burning them. Like, it's just like, I just, I go mm-hmm. to the darkest of places um, when mm-hmm. I imagine what I'm letting letting down. So, And it's so interesting because I have a family member who has ADHD and uh, he is the opposite. Like, he is so just... I'll just figure it out. It will all work out. Not worried about it. 
everything's last minute, doesn't yeah. care. Like you just kind of know, like he, that's just how he lives his life. And, and, uh, it's just really interesting. Like he, and I'm sure that there's things that I don't know that yeah. I don't see. <laughs> right. Um, but very carefree attitude. It's like, he's just, it, he really lives by his own rules and he's okay that's with that. Aspirational. Mm -hmm. aspirational and i think maybe yeah. um maybe conditioned because i i think i like to think that when i was 15 i might have had a better handle on just being pretty chill about it had i known what i was living with i think i would have right. better been at a better place but i was very confused right like my yeah i was confused but well it's it is interesting because like his wife will certainly get frustrated, you know, with like the messy office. Yes. Yeah. Right. But he really he doesn't, doesn't care. care. Uh -uh. Well, I Isn't that yeah, interesting? I, yeah. I mean it is it's just Yeah. Different. Well and people are and different. don't forget like the other side of that secondary anxiety is that it's not just you take it like letting other people down, but that you are working harder than everyone else to do the same yeah. thing. Right. And that can be Which letting yourself so down, feeling like you're on this treadmill that's set in reverse and you constantly yeah. have to, to kind of run just a little bit or a lot faster just to get to the same place. Absolutely. That is. And that's very yeah. true. I, I mean, that, I, I feel like that's that's the other piece of it. But once again, if there wasn't that comparative piece, would you be OK? Right. What, right. You probably would be fine because you're not comparing yourself to anybody else or anything. I mean, it, it, yeah, the only person you're comparing yourself is to is you. Yes. And yeah, you don't know you any don't different. You don't know any different. Uh, Stephanie Sarkis, uh, Dr. Stephanie Sarkis um, uh, mm -hmm. writes in Attitude, she says that, um, you know, that is the, uh, the piece. You may also have a primary anxiety, she says, and that's when you inherited genes for anxiety at the same time that you inherited genes for ADHD, right? So now, so you may have anxiety that manifests and is triggered by your experience with ADHD, and it may look exactly like somebody who is genetically predisposed to anxiety, but you also may have ADHD and anxiety, the, the genetic trait for anxiety that looks exactly the same, but it is, um, it's, uh, it's a separate but equal condition, right? And That's so interesting. it is really interesting. She says there's a 30% chance of having generalized anxiety disorder at the same time you have ADHD. Not anxiety that is triggered by ADHD, but full-on anxiety. As a, not anyway. as, yeah, anyway. Just stand yep. alone, yeah. I think that's, um, confusing and frustrating and it makes me think a lot about myself mm -hmm. because you know i i don't everything that i have been reading today are all steps that i would like to take in my own therapeutic journey because i'm not right. sure we've ever asked the questions quite this way and i think we can we we might be able to learn some things and i hope maybe yeah. those listening can learn some things uh doctors uh, Liji thomas and damian jonas wilson go pretty far saying that they actually recommend all patients with anxiety everyone who comes in and presents for anxiety should be screened for adhd oh i think this especially because you remember how earlier you said it's higher in women yeah. i would definitely say that that's probably true for depression and in, and anxiety, but also being screened yeah. for ADHD because it's so easily missed. Totally. Yeah, that's interesting. So well, why? Why do they say this that? This is why there are two reasons. Number one, anxiety masks ADHD, right? Symptoms of anxiety can be far more apparent than those of ADHD. And addressing anxiety can be like the easy, low-hanging fruit short-term solution to just feeling better immediately. It's like the microwave oven solution to, to feeling better. Yeah. Um, right. While not addressing the underlying conclusion, so or the underlying condition. So it's it's not a long-term fix. Uh and and conversely, addressing ADHD becomes the fastest way to address anxiety for those who are not genetically predisposed predisposed for anxiety, right? Because if the anxiety is directly caused by their experience of ADHD, helping them through the ADHD, coaching yeah. them through new experiences will alleviate the anxiety.
to some yes, degree. Because they understand. That's right. They understand how their brain works. There's an acceptance to, to how their brain works. And then they're going to be more open and willing to uh, build the structures and the, and the strategies that they need to do to, to live with the ADHD. I, yeah. yeah, I can see that. I think it's fascinating. doesn't make it go away. No. But I do think it gives you a, a, a completely different understanding of what's really right. going on. Right. And that's why it becomes so important to understand the, the your experience with those genetic indicators, right? We have these tools that can right. tell us a lot of stuff now. And uh, mm-hmm. if you're open to it and uh, open to the right sorts of assessments and tests, you can figure out, like, what is it that, why am I having mechanically, chemically, why am I dealing with anxiety even though I am addressing the ADHD? Why do I still live in these paralyzing thought spirals uh, even though I've got my systems on lock and I'm not letting people down? Why can I not let mm-hmm. these things go even though this part of my life is is doing just fine. And it may be yeah. because those things are not connected. Or maybe you now have a new tool to address anxiety, and it's just use a daily planner better, you know? Like, figure out a system to help you reduce stress, and suddenly your anxiety starts to feel a little bit better. Well, and something that just came up for me is the anxiety of... I mean, I know that we can, for me anyway, having anxiety can give me anxiety. Yes. But I also wonder if it's the opposite too, where, okay, I do have this planner. I am, it is working. It's working pretty well. Yeah. And now do you, and now what I see in coaching clients anyway, is there's now this anxiety around what if it stops working? Or I, I, it shouldn't be working because it hasn't worked before. So it's this like kind of thought process of is what I'm experiencing really true? Yeah, right. Right? Like, is this real? Is like, can I be happy about this? Could I actually get onto the podcast and say I have a planner that works? <laughs> 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 yeah, we. This is ironic that you say this. So one of the other, the other, uh, another podcast that I do with um, f- dear, I will say, dear friend of the show, uh, Tommy Metz, is um, what's that smell? Uh, the sometimes funny anxiety podcast, and the po- the the listener submission that we just did was teleophobia. Do you know what teleophobia is? Telling somebody something. No, and not. No, I don't know. Telephone? <laughs> you know, uh, related. Uh, it is, uh, the, the full definition is the disposition of mind which results in great unwillingness to admit that things tend toward definite ends, or that anything in nature is determined by anything not yet in existence. The it, practical language is fear of making plans. Right? Fear oh. of... Yeah. So we have these wonderful people who have delightful planners that are bedecked with stickers and colors and wonderful things, but people who are terrified to open them. People who are terrified to write anything in them. They're terrified to make plans for any number of reasons, right? Fear of travel, fear of holidays. But one of the... I don't know if this exists, but one of the terms that we've sort of coined is chained anxiety, where... You're anxious to commit to that next dentist appointment. You you won't write it in your planner because you know that commits you to anxiety in the future, and you're terrified of that, right? You're terrified of going to the dentist because you have a, a dental phobia or needle phobia, and you don't want to get a shot right. or whatever, and all of those things are chained together. They're, they're inextricably linked, and so it, it may manifest for you in teleophobia or teleophobic behavior where you just you can't make any any you can't make any plans at all you are paralyzed mm. at looking into the future and that's kind of what this that what you just said it that's what it makes me think of like you are if you say mm-hmm. something about your planner you're committing to a use of it that should allow you to be able to define your success with it later and what if it doesn't pay off and then there's this fear of later yeah. that it's not going right. to it's not going to be the same and not being and and, and yeah, right. And not accepting that that might be okay that it's not yeah. the same. Like it's okay to change your mind. But yep. well, and it's interesting because I can definitely tell you, especially now that we're talking about planners, <laughs> but uh, there is definitely this fear of putting anything, like even starting one, because what if you do it wrong? Or what if it, you know, what if I change my mind? Or what if it doesn't uh, go the way that I think it's going to go? And And honestly, 
those are all true things. Like you're probably not going to fill it out right. You're probably not going to, you probably are going to change your mind. You probably are going to need to adjust it, but it's getting, it's getting over the, the, the fear of, of that, but also being okay that accepting that it's okay if it's not yeah, right. It's right. okay if it's not perfect, you know, right? So, in terms of planners, yeah. I, a, a trick that I find particularly grounding is to look at a to look at a planner and when you face that fear, you th- just just look at the very last page and when it says like December 31st, 2021 yeah. and think to yourself, a year from now, this artifact that I am so terrified from of of doing something wrong to this artifact of time will be trash. Yeah, isn't that that's that's a really interesting way of looking yeah. at it. And can I just say another thing? I don't know how we got into planners, <laughs> but uh, I any any parents out there who have children or not children, teenagers, anybody that would be using a planner at this point in their school life. I bought a planner for my daughter at Christmas time and and it's cute, it's fun, it has stickers, it has pens, right? It has all that stuff. But I told her when I gave it to her, I said if this doesn't work for you, don't worry about yeah. it. Just let me yeah. know and we'll, we'll figure, figure something out something else. else. So I set the I set the bar right away that there is no expectation. And I got to tell you I was so proud because yesterday I went upstairs and and I saw her planner. She had her like little math assignment on That's it. Adorable. I was like, That's Yay! adorable. <laughs> Yeah. So, but anyway, I think just setting again the expectation that it's okay if it doesn't work. Yeah, it, really it really is. is. Like, don't beat yourself up. Even yeah. if the only thing you do to your planner is cross out the days as they go by, just to give right. yourself At a sense you know of time, you'll know what day it is. There's value. <laughs> yeah. There is value right there that is more than trash today, right? That's absolutely right. I like All right. it. Um, the, just to wrap it up, uh, you know, what yeah. do you do when you're in this space? And and now we understand a little bit more. And I just want to go back to our, you know, dear friend of the show who m- might not know he's our, as much of our friend as we are of his, uh, Ed Hallowell, who has this, uh, what I'm calling his trio of tried and true tools. Uh, and he says, first, uh, never worry alone. Uh, when you're feeling that state mm-hmm. of anxiety, uh, m- make sure you talk with somebody that you love. Keep a network of people who do know this about you, that you have been vulnerable with in the past, that are, recognize that you struggle with this, and talk to them. And this is exactly what we talked about last week, right? Keep your, right. like, how well are you using this time right now in the pandemic to reach out to people who you love and who love you and share your story with them? Because... Mm-hmm. That can help. That can go a long way. And it's made particularly difficult now, this week, today, right? It's hard. Yeah. Um, get the facts. He says that, uh, you know, when you're when you're in a state of anxiety, um, it's usually based on a story that you've made up. It's rooted in misinformation. And so either you, you believe something that isn't factually accurate because you've internalized that from somewhere else, or you just don't know, and so you have a story that causes you anxiety. Don't, you know, he says, don't take to heart everything you read, get the facts from trusted sources. That's made challenging today. It is, but I got to tell you something that's so interesting about that, is that I am, I'm really um, influenced by other people. Mm -hmm. And I never knew I was, um, but especially people that are like close to me. So if I, I may not think that anything's an issue, but then if my husband brings it up and thinks it's an issue, then all of a sudden the anxiety goes up to a 10. So I do think it's interesting, like get the facts. Like, I think it's important to kind of take a step back and saying, okay, is this my anxiety or is this his anxiety? Oh God, so, it's so I contagious. Fit? It is contagious. Yeah. I am a hundred percent with you. Uh, I do the same thing with my wife. It is the exact same yeah. behavior. I get it. It's really hard. The domino. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and finally, make a plan. Friend of the show, Ned Hallowell says, make a plan. When you have a plan, you feel more in control and less vulnerable, which diminishes worry. If the plan doesn't work, revise it. That's what life is all yes. about. Roll with the punches. Hard to do when you're in the middle of a paper bag breathing panic attack, but you do. 
you can do it. it. You can do it. And and this, I gotta go back to this planner. Maybe it's because we started talking about (laughs) GPS at the very beginning. And this is like where this is going. Uh, But this is this is why I did the GPS program is because if you have some kind of a plan, then you're more likely to get the stuff done that you need to get done. But you have no plan and you're just going to be out there treading water all day, every week um, and reacting to anything that comes your way. So it, 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 it doesn't, it's not going to be perfect. It's, it is going to need to be revised and whether it's a planner planning your week or any kind of plan that we're dealing with here. um, It is important, I think, to, to at least start with something and, and have that kind of that, that empowerment back you know, that, that control mm-hmm. back. And, and again, knowing that it, it probably won't go that way, but that's okay. You, that's what life is, right? Yeah. Life is not, it doesn't go as planned. Oh. I don't know if anything has ever really gone as I planned. I know. There was no manual. <laughs> Everything's always different. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's great. Yeah. Great, uh, great advice from our dear, dear friend. Dear friend of the show, Ed Hallowell. He's, uh, you know, and he's got this great uh, book. He wrote this book. Uh, new book coming out too, I think, does. right? Don't they have a Is new book? Is that the worry coming? book? Worry, colon, hope and help for a common condition. Uh, mm. is uh, We're going to have to get him back on the show to talk about yeah, this book. I think so. I think so. I think so. A good guy. I'm interested in hearing what he so has to So smart. Uh, so yeah. there you go. That's what I had. But that's all, all right. right. We did okay. Well, thank huh? you. It's we great. did good. All right. Well, uh, I don't feel anxious anymore. We're done. So thank you, yeah, everybody. We're done. We did this. <laughs> yeah, we did okay. Thank you. <laughs> we, yeah, feel we feel better. Fine. I hope you guys feel better. So. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody, for downloading and listening to the show. Thank you for your time and your attention. Don't forget, if you have something to contribute about this conversation, we're always uh, around in the Show Talk channel in our Discord server, and you can join us right there by becoming a supporting member at the deluxe level. On behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll see you right back here next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.